All right, guys, so we are headed back into the big country, and I promise you there will be big skies. There will definitely be big eats, but there will also be big snakes. Sweet water! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Sweetwater, Texas sits in the big country, right along Interstate 20, about 100 miles from Midland and 200 from Fort Worth. It's the land of roaming coyotes, buffalo, and rattlers. So tread carefully, trippers. But it isn't just what's hiding in the dirt that can catch you off guard. The skies hold their own dose of unexpected. Are you seeing all these wind turbines? This is crazy. And what's wild is that at ground level, you have these really old oil pump jacks, and then up in the sky, these you know green energy wind turbines. It's like two completely different worlds coming together right here in Sweetwater. Nolan County has more wind turbines than any other part of Texas, as this brown land looks toward a very green future, especially right here in Sweetwater. So for as modern as the windmills are, downtown Sweetwater still feels kind of like rugged and old, except for the courthouse, which is big, shiny, and new. And with the county's large collection of wind turbines, inside the courthouse, visitors will find the largest collection of antique Winchesters in the world. Check it out. It's the J. Paul Turner Winchester Collection. Over 100 rifles, some so rare that this is likely the only place you'll ever see them in your lifetime. When these were donated, J. Paul Turner required that they be taken out and cleaned quite often so that at any moment, any one of these could fire. Man, this is cool. The Winchester 1873-44 lever action rifle, known as the gun that won the West. Pretty cool. So there's a lot of history out here in Nolan County and Sweetwater. And as you might expect, most of it has to deal with like, you know, the frontier cowboys, Indians, buffalo, that kind of thing. But there's a story about some women who were forging a different kind of frontier out here, the frontier of the skies. To learn all about it, we're headed to the National Wasp World War II Museum, dedicated to the women who stepped up when our country needed them most. And this is museum president, Sandra Spears. Some of you may think that a wasp is a little flying insect. <laughs> <laughs> but during World War II, they were the women Air Force service pilots. Members of a super secret U.S. training program teaching women how to fly military planes. Scandalous for its day, as during World War II, only men were allowed to such duties. But one major problem is that there weren't enough men for the jobs. And so the WASP program was born. I think this is a story not many people know at all. Because it was a secret. And then when the program closed in 1944, their records were sealed. Oh, really? Yeah. Our leaders thought the country wasn't ready for female pilots, but that didn't stop over a thousand brave women from answering the call to serve. It was a civilian program. They had to pay for their own uniforms. $1.65 a day was deducted from their pay for room and board. <laughs> they had to pay their way to get here. They had to pay their way to get home. Mm. And if they were killed, and there were 38 that were killed, the girls usually took up a collection to send the body home on the train. So this was so. totally under the radar. These yes. women didn't look like they were on payroll or anything. No. Uh -uh. And for every wasp that signed up, well, their journey started in Sweetwater at the only all-female training base in the country. Male pilots couldn't even land here. Oh, yeah, keep them out of here. it would be amazing how many pilots had engine trouble and just had to land <laughs> Yeah, here. what do you know? You know, check out all these good-looking girls. Beautiful, smart, brave, and tough. Serving our country at jobs others didn't want, like ferrying planes from factories to bases, or worse. Some of them were tow target pilots that towed targets for gunnery practice. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound Using like a very good job. live ammunition. Wow, but how far behind well, would the target be? Well, about 150 feet. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Not very far. <laughs> Not far at all. <laughs> now you hear the men talk about being B-17 pilots or B-24 pilots or whatever. Right. But the women had to fly them all because they never knew from one day to the next what plane they might be delivering. Wow. They had to be ready for anything. Today there isn't much left of the old base and most of what remains out here are just the stories. And for Sandra, well this is more than just history. This is family, as her father was a primary WASP trainer. Sandra remembers a day when WASP women would come to her home, likely feeling a bit homesick. And mother said the main thing they wanted to do was lie down on a real bed, take a bath, and play with my sister and me. Uh -huh. Because a lot of them left children at home. Goodness. I think that's a, a pull to serve that we don't see nowadays. They love their country and they love to fly. And that's how they could serve their country. Mm, amazing. And it's because these women forged the path that female pilots are now a critical part of our military. And with a great museum like this, well, their service and sacrifice will not be forgotten. On the other hand, I have almost forgotten about one very important part of Trippin, lunch. So let's fix that by paying a visit to the big boys. Barbecue, that is. Run by pitmaster Galen Marth, Big Boys has been ranked as one of Texas's best. The dining room is decorated like an old Wild West fort, which is appropriate considering the barbecue traditions you'll find in the back. We're all direct heat. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Most people use offset smokers. Yeah, we're, that's, we're old school. Ones. Kind of the old cowboy tradition, yes. right? Yes, yeah. yes. My, my dad and granddad are Germans, and I grew up cooking on these type of pits. Really? So uh, I didn't know any difference. <laughs> Direct heat means the meat goes directly over the coals, cooking the barbecue hot and fast. Briskets are done in a blazing six to seven hours. And around big boys, well, that's only over mesquite coals. Firebox out there, it's my original firebox on the outside. Really? 17 years old, it looks like it's about it to fall apart. <laughs> it looks like it's about 75 years old. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it does its job. And what kind of temperature are you gonna maintain in one of these? They're gonna be about 250 degrees, 275 okay. degrees. Okay. And maybe up to 300. You see no thermometers on them, so it's all kind of by touch and feel. Proving once again that barbecue is as much art as science. All right, so what should I have for lunch? What do you think? For you, maybe we'll just uh, get the child's plate for you. I come to Big Boys Barbecue, I get the child's plate? That's for Big Boys. Oh, okay, <laughs> this is a different, this is a Sweetwater style child's plate. Cause Big Boys are still children at heart, right? How's that for a lunch right there? <laughs> All right, so in a place that's famous for its ribs, I had to get both kinds. These are called your ribs. No, they're not your ribs, they're my ribs. But they're your ribs too. Yeah, oh, no. You can order your own your ribs. These are my ribs. Wait, what, no, wait, wait, no. What they're called? No, these are my ribs. These Fine. are your ribs. Confused? Most are. But my ribs are Galen's favorite. Your ribs are his wife's favorite. <laughs> and so the fun begins. And this is my rib, which looks nothing like a rib because, well, it's not. It is actually a uh, piece of pork butt. Dude, that is good. That's really good. Good seasoning, it's super tender. Man, I really like my ribs. Let's see if I like your ribs too. Oh, dude. It's been sauced during cooking, so it's kind of got this little glaze going on top of that. That's phenomenal. I am confused about the my ribs. I mean, I have no idea why they're actually called ribs when they're not, but I'm not gonna argue when they taste this good. These are your ribs, so I guess I should give you one, right? But I'm also gonna give you some of my ribs because I like you. <laughs> we now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. All right, trippers, so we've gotten about halfway through our trip and haven't yet discussed the main reason folks all over the world know about Sweetwater, Texas. And it has everything to do with rattlesnakes, as this town is home to the largest rattlesnake roundup in the world. And conveniently, well, it's happening today. The Roundup is Sweetwater's largest festival, a time when folks come together to celebrate, crown the new Miss Snake Charmer, and round up as many rattlers as they can. Now, the main party takes place on the rodeo grounds, but before we get there, well, I thought we'd participate in the full tradition. So we're going on a guided rattlesnake hunt with the Sweetwater JCs. And since I've never done anything like this, I thought I'd call in another TV favorite host. 
Let's hope he's better with snakes than he was with alligators. Good day, mates. Rattlesnake Chet here out in Texas. Texas. And today I'm going to be showing you some real live rattlesnakes. R rattlesnakes. Take this. Oh, great. I love s'mores. No, no, no. That's for rattlesnakes. Well, why would anyone want to roast a rattlesnake? Um, that's for catching rattlesnakes. Well, <laughs> why would anyone want to catch a rattlesnake? You Americans think that anyone with an Australian accent can just go willy nilly and touch a rattlesnake? Let's keep moving. So. Rattlesnakes are everywhere. Everywhere. Well, let's hope we don't see some. Okay, so here we have a very typical rattlesnake den. Lots of places for them to hide. And right about now, I wish that I was back in my mom's den in Sydney. So I'm gonna go this way. Wait, wait. So rattlesnakes are actually the descendants when a T-Rex mated with a sea monster. Wrong. Not a snake, not a snake, not a snake. Phew, okay. A lot of people don't know this, but rattlesnakes are actually changelings and can look. Ah! Not a snake, not a snake, not a. Oh. This is a joke. Don't make me do that again, please, producer. So once a snake lays eggs inside of your intestines, not it can true. bulge out and all. claw. No, I know that one's true. You're not going to fool me on this. You're trying to make me look like an idiot. You're pathetic. Yeah, never mind. This guy is terrible. Good thing we've got some real rattlesnake experts out here, like JC Cliff Jones. So explain to me a little bit about why you guys do this out here. Well, it started uh, 59 years ago. And it's kind of turned into a big fundraiser for the Sweetwater area, and we do it with guides, and they know what they're doing, and we do a pretty good job of that, so. Well, let's go catch some. Okay. How, we're, how are we gonna do this, though? Explain to me, well, before we get out there and there's, you know, live rattling rattlesnakes around me. Well, we're gonna go down to this den around the corner here and okay. we're gonna see if they're happen to be laying out. Okay. You gotta be a little careful where you walk. Other than that, well, I think we'll be okay. I've never been more careful where I step. Every stick looks like a snake. And Cliff estimates that this den alone has 200 to 300 rattlesnakes in it. This is it, huh? This, this is, is it. it. Obviously, this should only be done with a professional and with great, great safety. We have in this hand here a mirror. We use that for light. We take the sunlight, shine it back into the den. That's why you gave me this thing. It seems these guys aren't nearly as scared as I am right now. There whoa, is. whoa. The first one we catch isn't a rattlesnake, but a coach whip. The non-venomous roommates to the rattlesnake. But next up, oh, we got one. Oh, you got one. Here he comes. Oh, 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 my goodness. Nice snake. That's a good sized snake. Woo! Does your heart race still when you do this? No, not unless I slip down. <laughs> <laughs> then I might not be alive when I hit the bottom. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that's true. Not that. I got one. I got my first rattlesnake on a hook. There you go. <laughs> Man, that was a little bit easier than I expected. That's the benefit of doing this in March. A time of year when the snakes are just coming out of hibernation and still staying close to their dens. And just like me, well, it seems they're also a bit grumpy after long naps. Oh! 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 He sensed that. Oh! You see the venom dripping down the GoPro? <laughs> Whoa! What? You fi finally hit his hot button. <laughs> Must have. See? My forearm has never been tighter, but I am not <laughs> loosening up on this. <laughs> How far do you have to stay back from these guys? To, well, he like, strike about half his body length, maybe a little more. Oh. But they really are not gonna wanna strike you unless you make them. You don't get the business in unless you just yeah, ignore you the warning in. That, you'd probably be safe with that. Rattlesnakes are incredible, but they are nothing to be played with and will strike if provoked. And in West Texas, well, it's not if you encounter one, it's when. All right, so Cliff, now I have a striking rattlesnake at the end of my hook. What, what do I do with it? Why don't we turn it loose? <laughs> <laughs> as long as I can do it and run wherever I'm going, I got a clear path. Oh, you won't path. have to run. This guy is yeah, he's really angry. angry. He's really angry. There you go. He's, oh! just, he's so mad he wanted to leave quick. He disappeared into the shadows. The shadows oh, of my nightmare. The JCs lead public hunts all throughout the fest. And now that we've done the roundup part, well, let's head to the big fiesta part. Man, this place is hopping. If being out on a ranch and seeing a couple snakes terrified you, 
you probably shouldn't come anywhere near this Coliseum, but we're about to jump right to the middle of it. And can you hear it? I mean, actually, like on the other side of the arena, it sounds like a distant waterfall. That's the rattlesnakes. Let's go check it out. This is the largest roundup in the world, attracting more than 25,000 visitors, all here to see one thing, snakes. Lots of snakes, purchased from local wranglers who were paid by the pound. And now this event draws lots of criticism. But to the Sweetwater JCs, well, it's their chance to educate the public and give them an up close and personal lesson on the incredible Western Diamondback rattlesnake. It's also the chance for the public to purchase every snaky item your slithering heart could imagine. Add this to my mad science lab. <laughs> Look, Miss Snake Charmer, there she is. Royalty, she is the queen of all rattlesnakes. Crowned just last night, the Snake Charmer pageant is just one of the many traditions here. And the JCs put on everything as a way to further and fundraise for their mission of community service and leadership. And what better place for an interview than the pit? This is JC Rob McCann. <laughs> Welcome to the pit. So, Rob, let me start. I'm glad we're in this pit and not that one. Well, the pit over here, we, you just don't want to be in there. That's where all the weigh-in snakes that come into the roundup, they go into the big pit first. Then uh, they take a short trip over here. This is where we weigh them and measure them. This is where all the action starts at the world's largest rattlesnake roundup. Wow. And what's probably most surprising is that none of these guys have ever been bit. Terry's been doing this 26 plus years. I've been doing it 23 plus years. I'm not scared of rattlesnakes, but I have a very, very healthy respect for this animal. What we do this whole show for is educating the public. If we can keep one kid from getting bit, everything we do through the whole year has become worth it. That's well said. And in this pit, Terry Hollywood Armstrong runs the show, weighing and measuring each snake so the research can be sent to Texas Parks and Wildlife, who makes sure the Texas rattlesnake population stays strong. And after the snakes are researched, it's on to the milking pit with Dennis Cumby. Yep, I just said milking rattlesnakes. Oh boy. Pit, we're here in the milking pit at the roundup. <laughs> you know what this entails, don't you? <laughs> Maybe, but I'm gonna let you explain. This is where we extract the venom from the snake. All right, all right. What we do is we're gonna take him out of the bucket over here and we're gonna get one up here on the table and pin him get proper grip on him and then we'll put him on this glass funnel and we will milk him. <laughs> Not the kind of milk that goes in your morning cereal. You wouldn't want to drink this one. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Why in the world? But rattlesnake venom has many uses, including the creation of anti-venom. And it's used in scientific studies for everything from heart attacks to strokes. We got him, Chet. This is when you got the absolute death grip, right? That's pretty much. Okay, so his fangs retract. They fold under. He's doing that himself. Now I'm gonna give him a little help. Wow, so you're just milking those glands, the pushing glands that out. Right up in here on both sides of his head and we Woo! squeeze those glands. That looks like enough to kill a grown man. Very much so. Really? Woo! We'll it. average about a half a milliliter per pound of snake. Half a milliliter. So if we do 2,000 pounds of snakes, we'll get about a, a liter of venom. How do, how, is that about how much you do every year? A little bit more than that. Got it. Dennis is offering to teach me how to milk venom. Now, I'm not sure when I will ever need this life skill, but okay, anyone else nervous? You sure about this? I'm positive. Okay. Right here. Right hand, now look. Right hand. Pointer finger on top of the head right here. Get a grip, Chet. No, literally, and it better be a good one. I think I got him tight enough. I think so too. All right. Oh, holy moly. Whew. I'm telling oh. you why. <laughs> I got one, guys. All right, now put him up here. You'd have him right there. And we're milking the snake. If your first one's the scariest, I'm terrified now, so <laughs> I hope it gets better. All right, now what to do? I got a live rattlesnake on the hand. Down Just on the floor, both hands. Both hands. Whoo! did it. Thank you guys, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go take a moment and change my pants. Now you may be wondering, what happens to all these snakes? Now my job is to show you Texas, but if you have a weak stomach, you might not want to see this. 
You see, 60 years ago when the roundup started, local law enforcement had become overwhelmed with nuisance calls on snakes in homes and schoolyards. So they started this event to help control the population. And even to today, JCs are very careful with how many snakes they kill each year. And by some accounts, the overall population is only getting stronger. Now this event definitely draws criticism and can certainly feel barbaric to outsiders, like some old vestige of the Wild West that should also go the way of the buffalo, especially to those who don't live around snakes. However, there's no denying, here in West Texas, it's more than just a fest. It's part of their cultural heritage. And staying true to the rules of the Wild West, well, no part of the snake is wasted. Because if you're going to kill it, you better eat it. And that's exactly what they do. A sweetwater delicacy. And this is Chef Cheyenne Parks. All right, so you find that this is most people's first time to ever eat rattlesnake? A lot of people, yes. We do have those that come every year just for the snake. Yeah. But we've had people from Canada, Japan, all over the world. What? A lot of the time that they're expecting fish, they're expecting chicken, so they bite into expecting one thing and it's totally opposite of what they were expecting. <laughs> it was deep fried uh, rattlesnake. Uh, it, it's a lot like frying catfish. And does it taste like catfish? It tastes like snake. It, 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 it's a taste of its own. There's, there's no taste like anything. It, it's snake. Cheyenne is now the unintended king of fried snake. They gave me the recipe and said, you can play with it, do what you want. And past four years, I, I've had the best snake, according to everybody else. <laughs> best rattlesnake cook in Texas. The only rattlesnake cook in Texas. <laughs> now, it's bone in. It's so, bone yeah. in, and that's actually one of the harder parts about eating rattlesnake, is because you've got the rib bones. Sure. So the best part is right down the, the backbone, there, there's a good chunk of meat. Okay. Right down that back strip. I had a gentleman last year, he went through like 10 boats of snake. So it is a bit of an acquired taste, but once you're hooked, you're in for the long haul. Pretty much. All right, man, well now I gotta try some for myself. Time to order a boat of snake. There it is, rattlesnake. Thank you. All right, gotta find a place to sit and eat this. All right, winner, winner, rattlesnake dinner. I got, I don't know, maybe a half dozen pieces of rattlesnake here. And look at all this, look, you got the full rib cage bones right there. I shouldn't think about this too much. I'm just gonna go in here. Well, my friend, tastes like rattlesnake. <laughs> you know what, it's seasoned really well. There's those big top parts of meat that Cheyenne was talking about. Chicken-like, frog leg-like. It, it's clean tasting like chicken, but it's, it's chewy. But you know what it most reminds me of? Eating alligator. Oh, that's a good piece of meat. Never mind. <laughs> My mama told me not to leave anything on the bone. I'm not sure what's bone and what's meat. I must say that when you're at the Rattlesnake Roundup, this right here is at least one mandatory meal that you have to eat. When in Sweetwater, you must dine like the Sweetwaterians. I can't be right. <laughs> what a day. We definitely rounded up rattlers, rattler knowledge, and even rattlesnake meat. But in Sweetwater, we rounded up so much more, like barbecue traditions and hidden history that are all part of a community that may seem a bit strange to outsiders, but round yourself up for a visit during the fest or not, and you'll quickly realize that here in Texas, normal was never our strong suit, certainly not in Sweetwater. So I picked up a few souvenirs. I think it's pretty tasteful. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Fire County. Oh, he doesn't look very good. You know, I think I got over my fear of snakes, you know, after the 20th part, it's not so bad. Let's go, let's go blurry. Oh. Vaya con Dios, amigos. Can we get some EMS for this guy? Where's the ambulances, back this way? We can walk, listen, we got a cane, we gotta walk cool to it. Are you seeing all the number of windmills everywhere? All the number? All the number. It's a it's a tremendous number. I get it. Ah, I speaking I speak in the figurative languages. I, I speaking? I speaking figuratively. I'm just trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like an ostrich. Can I touch that rattle? I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> That's all you had to say. That's why I ask. <laughs> Thank you guys, ladies and gentlemen. 
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.